come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show and review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination, you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. And we like you. We do like you. I like you. Because you like us. Thanks for listening. So these are the people talking to you, the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. That was very sincere. Like, thanks for listening. It was also very radio y. <laughs> That's right. Oh. And now we're watching a movie, or we watched a movie that was chosen by Holly. Yes. Uh, what transpired tonight? Tonight. And by who? Oh. In what year? Oh, and oh. written by. So many questions. So I have many, many questions. Okay. 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 First. We watched The Skeleton Key. We did. From the year 2005. 2005. Directed by Ian Softley. Who we would know from. Hackers. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Is Not that K-Pax? Is that it? Well, sure, K Pax, okay. but no K-Pax. one remembers K Pax. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I Hackers. remember K Pax. I remember the trailers for K Pax. I've about seen it. it. Yeah. yeah. I forgot about K Pax. A few yeah. times. We all wanted more out of that movie. He also mm-hmm. he had a indie like breakthrough was a movie called Backbeat, which is about yeah. like, the Beatles. That was the nineties yeah. indie. So yeah. hackers. Hackers, <laughs> hackers so, yeah. is, is the one. And uh, Hack the Rip- Planet. Nobody? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. No, yes. Right. yes. It's just, That's, yeah. No one shouted that at me for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a it's been a hot minute. Um, uh written by Aaron Kruger. Aaron Kruger. Aaron Kruger, the real, the real twist to Sean at the end of the really movie. It really was, because I, I just ignored everything in this movie, and then his name popped up. Surprisingly, the because I feel clearer. like you would have an appreciation for Mr. Kruger. An appreciation? Given <laughs> Scream 3. Well, <laughs> okay, look, I love Scream 3. Exactly. I also know... I You're also, the only one. Yeah, yeah, but I also know... That Aaron Kruger wrote it, okay? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I know that. It's like Kevin Re- Williamson wrote the good ones, and then Aaron, Aaron Kruger, Kruger wrote yeah. the bad ones. So one. I realize okay. that. But I give him a lot of sway because of the ring. Okay, yeah. let's... He gets a lot of credit. All right, since we're in it's it. It's a remake. Since we're... So he was adapted. Right. It's more like he was polishing okay. up sure. Sure. And we have a lot of feelings sure. in Aaron Kruger. I think we should, we should go through, like, his thing right now. He's written. He's written a lot. Well, first of all... The way he spells his name is already a red flag. Yeah, that's already it's like you're E-H-R-E-N. right, dude. I know your parents gave that to you, but I was going to say that right. might not be his fault. All right, but... so he's written. Uh, he started with Killers in the House in 1999, Arlington uh-huh. Road. I remember that, which uh-huh. I, I like, like that it, movie. Yeah. Okay. okay, there you he's, go. Uh, there was another movie, Scream Three, was after that. Sure. Say what you will. <laughs> uh, Reindeer Games in 2000. Oof. Mm. All right, the wheels are wobbling. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I had fun with that movie, but okay, I also I haven't say, watched it in 20 years. I used to watch that movie a lot. Yeah, so a lot. Like that, like he did that by himself. I want a piece of pecan fucking pie. Yeah. I used to watch the movie a lot. <laughs> yeah, I liked that movie. Wheels are wobbling, guys. <laughs> uh, Imposter in 2000. I don't know what that is. Uh, the Ring in 2002. Rings, ring, ring. Ring 2. Yep, yep, yep. Skeleton Key. The Brothers Grimm. However you feel about that. Never seen that. Blood and Chocolate. Then we get into the Transformers yeah. in wow. 2009. Okay, but didn't Blood and Chocolate do like really well? Like, Did it? I thought it, was rec- I thought it was received very Even well. With that vampire werewolf thing with... Um, it's got 5.4 stars I don't know. on it. I could be making that up. I thought it was received very well. Ghost in the Shell. The remake. Ooh. Yeah, the yeah. Scarjo. Yeah, yeah. with Scarjo remake. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Lately, Dumbo. Ooh, and that Tim Burton Dumbo. Coming mm-hmm. out, Top Gun Maverick. Right. Oh, Yikes. no. <laughs> so he is a... Uh, okay, so, but at this point in his career, 2005, then, he was kind of, like, on the upswing yes. of his uh, career. He's in doing demand, a lot, yeah. The flavor yeah. of the month, uh, come on in. But this so is, like... So many Transformers. I guess what's you know, what strikes me about this is that it's solely written by him. So then it's like, okay, was it a uh, job that he was commissioned for, or is this his idea that he was able to pitch somewhere... Uh, and get it made. You know, shockingly enough, I could not find much information really? <laughs> about, about that the, topic. <laughs> okay, because I'd just be curious. It's yeah. like, all right, well, this is an, a concept anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I feel like he gets a lot of assignments from studios. That's right. <laughs> I w- <laughs> but there was be, no story by or anything on I this. Know, you know I would I mean? be surprised if this was like his, you know, passion project. It, it kind of seems like he was just hired on, but I don't know. I couldn't find much about this. Okay. Sorry. Who's in this movie? 
Kate Hudson is in this movie. The wonderful Kate Hudson. The what beautiful, happened to lovely Kate Hudson. Kate Hudson. I'm only. I mean, I may be completely ignorant here, but mm-hmm. it feels like she has evaporated from at least the movies that are in my orbit for like the last. So much so that when I saw her in this, I'm like, oh, yeah, she does act. Yeah. Like, I haven't seen a Kate Hudson movie in a while. I, uh, yeah, I don't know if I could name one past, like, 2008. You know, like, yeah. I'm trying to like, really you go to, like, rom-com like Gold movies Rush? and stuff like that. Wasn't yeah. that one? God, with bite McConaughey. Your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, did I name the bad Kate was Hudson, Matthew cool. McConaughey yeah, movie? Yeah, that was cool. 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 You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. Very <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Wait, I saw that. Yeah, you are correct. Yeah, okay. Yes, I'm very sorry. Which is what I wanted out of the SARS Guard in this movie, because I'm like, you know what? Matthew McConaughey's accent would be a lot better in the back and forth between these two. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember. I feel like she's done something recently. Like she was on like a, makes a show or love. something. But it's not like she has to voice. work, right? Like when you're like a when you're part of Hollywood royalty, do you really need need to work? Yeah, but know? I'm sure she's, she wants uh, to. Goldie Hawn's daughter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she is. So what was it? Because she, I know she's always said that Kurt Russell was basically like that's her dad, but yeah. it's not her yes. biological dad. No, it's not her biological dad, no, but, but he who is her dad? Her. Do we know? Oh, I don't know. Don't know okay. if we know. Oh, no, um, we, we do. Oh God, what is like it? an actor or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or? yeah um, there's some lineage yeah. there. I think she had her breakout role. It was almost famous, right? Yes. yes. The Cameron Crowe. Bill movie. Hudson. He was comedian. Okay. That okay. Made, okay. That sounds familiar. Dad to her and her brother Oliver. So yeah. is when they make the sequel to this is Goldie Hawn. Please cast Goldie Hawn to play the old version of Kate Hudson <laughs> right. in the sequel. Yeah. I think that would be great. Yeah. I'd watch the shit out of that movie. Would you? Goldie Hawn doing voodoo? Even if Aaron wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I have and they, limits. Okay. So, and they did the, an overboard remake and didn't cast her in it. Right. right. How I fucked mean, up is that? Come on. I mean, she probably passed. She probably. Saw, she saw the script and she was like, fuck that. Maybe, they, yeah, maybe they went you know? to her. I don't know. So they yeah. landed on Anna Ferris. Yeah, sweet Anna. <laughs> yeah. Anna's been in the news lately and I just, shout out to Anna Ferris. She's great. <laughs> but it's definitely just, like, great. who's another blonde with bangs? Uh, that's how they true. went for casting for that movie. <laughs> that <you know>? is true. <laughs> yeah, she's, uh, yeah, she's like the only one they could have cast, I think, in that. Yeah, based on her mom popularity. Um, well, how do we Although, know? This, I was like speaking from someone who has not seen the movie. I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I, I don't no think idea. anybody saw that movie. I think yeah. you know what? Actually, I think people it saw and it, and I think people liked it. Generally, they're not going to rave about it, but I think it was just like that was pretty good. Was it? Well it's received? a problematic concept. I mean, of sure. a movie, really so is. you know, sure, it really yes. is. But I think it was like it was pretty all right. I don't think people had a problem with it. Really? You say that as someone who also has not watched it, though, right? right. So also, like- I'm just saying what I think, what I heard people saying at the time. It did come did and you go. Hear that? Yeah. Are you just really bo- just pulling that out of nowhere? Yeah. Mm, Do you know? I bet if I movie? did research, it would back up my theory. Do you know anyone? So that's it seen is this a theory. Movie, okay. Yeah. Okay. Nailed I said it. theory. That but is it's a not. theory. Yeah. He did not hear right, anything. Fine. You, yeah. you, you just drove me to look up how this. <laughs> fine. You guys talk amongst yourselves about skeleton key. Okay. Yeah. So who else is in this movie? Uh, John Hurt, Gina Holy Rollins. cow, what? He got like big names a in this movie. voiceless yeah. John Hurt. A voiceless mm-hmm. John Hurt, yeah. I dare yeah. But uh, yeah, Jenna Rollins is, um, I mean, do you guys know Jenna Rollins? Uh, from the notebook. Right. I was like, no, I know the name, no. but I don't know why I know okay, it. Maybe no, that's I'm going to no connect idea. her back to the Saturday Night Freak Show. Was she um, in Trick or Treat, Colin? I no. feel like that's where you're going with that. <laughs> was her <laughs> mother in Trick or Treat? Give me something here. All right, All right. so she was... Seven uh, degrees of Saturday Night Freak Show. Probably right, in right. Twin Peaks. Where are you going with this? No. But, where are you going with All right. this? She was um, famously in a bunch of indie movies that were made by John Cassavetti, is the okay. actor, okay. who you would know from. Rosemary's Baby or right. the Dirty Dozen. Dirty Dozen, right. yeah, yeah. Um, and so he like basically started, I think, what is now considered like independent film, right? He would finance these movies by himself, and he met her, mm. and they got married and made all these movies. Um, like A Woman Under the Influence is one of them, and uh, very well-regarded films. Anyway, they have a kid, and the kid's name is Nick Cassavetes. Nick Cassavetes went on to become a director. And, and a made, star of... Book, but he was a star in a movie that we did called The Wraith. Yeah. Oh, yeah the Wraith. Well done. <laughs> so there we go. And he directed The Notebook. And he directed yeah. The Notebook there you go. with there his mom, is. Jenna Rollins. Uh, yeah. So she's in it. John Hurt, of course, I don't think needs any introduction, right? No. Everybody no. knows. Yeah. God bless him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, he has now passed, but not he after rests. he got to, yeah. he finally did get to play Doctor Who. He was great. He went out. On Doctor Who, Aww. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did he get to play Doctor Who? Yeah. yeah. He was the forgotten he, it, Yeah, he was oh, in the, shit. they did like a 50th anniversary special and he was like, and they had like right. all the doctors through time and they was like, wait, we missed one and it was John Hurt. And he, <laughs> sure. it, was, he, it was pretty badass. I was going to say, I kind of want to go watch that. Yeah. yeah. It's not too bad. And it's contained. It's like an hour and a half and mm-hmm. you can be in and out. 
Um, do you guys do you guys listen to Alt J at all? The band Alt no. J. No, no. Oh, they, have a, they have a song. It's called "The Ballad of John Hurt," and it's pretty great. Oh, oh yeah. that's cool. And I think that's that what it's called. It's something about yeah. John Hurt. Yeah, it's pretty great. Mm -hmm. I like that. It feels anyway. like did he do the voice of like um, Gollum in like the animated like he Hobbit movie have. or something? Or, oh, He's just sure. been in so much. Yeah, Alien, obviously, mm -hmm. and all. Yeah. Right. Um. So who else is in this movie? There's one other major cast member. Peter Sarsgaard. Who we would know from? From the Sarsgaard family. Oh okay, yeah. So <laughs> not to be con we need to talk who, about yeah, who, are, who, yeah. who are the so, Sarsgaards and the Skarsgards? Peter Sarsgaard. Um, I think the first movie I ever saw him in was Garden State. I think that was my introduction. Oh to Peter yeah, Sarsgaard. probably. That sounds right. Yeah, he's been in lots of stuff, but I think that was my first thing ever watching with him. Um, but not to be confused with the Skarsgaard brothers. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Alexander and Bill. And Bill, mm -hmm. yeah. Who well, are just, from and Stellan. They're Stellan. Stellan. Their yeah. father, Stellan. And Bill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, Bill. You said Bill. Bill. Yeah, yeah, Alexander, Bill, Stellan. There's three. Isn't there one more? There's three. I yeah. feel like we're missing another this one. Is we are like, missing this one. is like yeah. Baldwin's. You lose track yeah. at some yeah. point. Mm -hmm. It's like, you look familiar. Yeah. Yeah. But those that's not the family we're no. talking about. No. No. Who are the Sarsgaards? Yes, who are they? There's Peter and... Paul. Maybe Mary. Joke. I'm drawing a blank. Oh, okay. All right. I, I thought there was a whole, a whole like uh, dynasty here. I, I'm not entirely. <laughs> he's married. He's married to Maggie Gyllenhaal. Okay. Mm. All right. I am unfamiliar with the. Uh, I don't. I'm like I can't even remember the last thing. This is what I remember him mm -hmm. from. The skeleton key. Oh, really? Yeah. He's been in lots of stuff. He was in um, an education with Carrie Mulligan, which was I thought was a pretty good movie. Mm -hmm. He was in that bad Magnificent Seven. Remake. Oh fuck! That's right. He was, he was the bad guy. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, he's been he's made a lot of bad like period drama choices. Like he was also in Black Mass. He that was movie in Black no Mass. one saw. Mm. Yeah. No, I did see that the Johnny Depp the uh, Whitey Guys, Bulger. I'm sorry, this is really important. Yes. He was. I can't believe we missed this. He was in the slap. The slap, slap, the phenomenal the slap, slap. You got to look that one up. The was it an NBC show? It was an NBC. It was an NBC limited event, Colin. Yeah, limited event, miniseries, if you will. Yeah, because when you slap a child on network television, you got to get some ad dollars around it. Do we establish how many episodes this was? I think it's like six. Six episodes yeah. about a slap. About Zachary Quinto slapping one a kid. slap. Yeah. Yeah. Just the one. Just going to court to destroy the parents. <sighs> yeah. Holly, it's really about how it destroys a community. Mm. That's you know? true. Mm. It's true. A community of white people. <laughs> so, the, uh, well, actually, I think at this point we should probably say before we start talking about this movie uh, this is a mystery uh, movie that has a bunch of twists and turns and all that. We're going to spoil those because yeah. we have to, in order to, you know, address the totality of it, how well they pulled mm -hmm. it off. Yes. And we're going to talk about it. So this is your fair warning. If you haven't seen The Skeleton Key and you're interested in what it's about, mm -hmm. you should go. Uh, pause you should, this. You should know. You should watch go. it and Just. come back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Overboard was loved by audiences, but panned by critics. <laughs> that's a Who said that? Who said that? Eighty-three percent audiences like that's kind of the favorite it gets, and then it, it sounds like you're workshopping like a poll quote for the Blu-ray release or something, Sean. <laughs> I will. I'll take it. You're sure. Really, you're weirdly let's dying get, on let's this. Get a, let's overboard. get a special edition of Overboard. We yeah. can double package it with Zola and just you know keep going. You're gonna, you you want like a fancy slip case for you it too? You will not stop about Zola. I watched. I it's watched, a joke now. I'm just gonna keep. I bringing watched it up. about ten minutes of it the other day, and I was like, "Is this really what he's been talking about?" Wait until I told you it's not a thing. I'm just making it a thing. All right. Wait until our best and worst of the year episode, <laughs> Sean, which is coming up. Zola for all five yeah. slots. Mm -hmm. no. Like I was seriously sitting there going, "Like this can't be what he was talking about." And then they said the girl's name Zola, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, this fucking is it. Yeah. This is it." Mm -hmm. So sorry. Watch all right. So <laughs> Holly, tell us about the skeleton key. What's the <laughs> we'll setup? Finally, get to this for point. this movie. Well, well, Colin, a skeleton key can open any door in a house. It's the master key. Is you that ever what live you're in a house where you had a skeleton key? <laughs> You know what? No, I didn't. But my grandpa had skeleton keys. I don't know what they were to, but I was like Skeletons. to play with them. My childhood house cool. was like, yeah, it was a hundred year old farmhouse. Right, Every yeah. lock was a, the the old timey locks. So. I'm so jealous. I was, yeah. I'm so jealous. I was very disappointed when I found out skeleton keys were not made of bones. Right. Or a little skull yeah. on top. Yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. Something a little more. But key. they were always cool because they always. I mean, it's a, it's a it's always cool to have like that heavy. Like yeah. brass key mm -hmm. that can just open these doors and everything. It's just fun. To this day, I have no idea why my grandpa had all those keys. It's kind of freaking me I out. Mean, I mean, when you see it. movies like this, what see, do you think? He's got a voodoo, a voodoo room? room. I, guarantee, oh, I guarantee that man was hiding something. He was you evil. could be the next <laughs> Aaron, Kruger, Aaron Kruger. All right, so for the for the initial setup, the pitch sure. of this movie, pitching to people, like, right. what's it about? 
Uh, we start out with a healthcare worker. Uh, Kate Hudson works in hospice care. She currently works at a uh, nursing home. She reads to people she as reads, they die. Yeah, she's she's taking care of an elderly man. She's Dr. Sleep. She is Dr. Sleep. She's taking care of an elderly man, and she's reading to him, and um, he dies as she's reading to him. And it's clear she's formed some sort of bond with him. She's she's close to them. Um, and then when he dies, basically the nursing home is just like, oh, no one came to claim his stuff, so just throw it out because they don't want anything to do with him. And that just kind of tugs at Kate Hudson's heartstrings. Mm, yeah, she's so not she, okay with that. Why is she a hospice her. worker? We're getting into the character we're Getting here. right this into is, it. Yeah, gonna... yeah, we find out later that her father died and was very sick for a long time but she was away from home at the time and did not take care of him while he was dying and she apparently he didn't feels tell bad her about it. right he didn't he tell was her dying. and she thought she had more time she yeah. feels bad about it so she's trying to so take care of the world so her whole career is basically trying to make up for that yep yeah. yep okay but she doesn't like working in the uh, no. assisted uh, no, living it's home a business they're all business they don't care about people she wants to care about people She's going to go find a home to work in instead of the nursing home. Of course, we are in uh, Louisiana and New Orleans. We're down on the bayou, Colin. So that means if you're going to go work for somebody <laughs> Ooh, in their I house. The humidity already. We got the vapors. <coughs> so where are we? Where is she going? Where is the, uh, the where does the job take her? Swamp. The Devereaux house. Mm-hmm. Which is in? A different parish. Yeah, it's a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> the bogs uh, of New Orleans. Yeah. Don't they say it's like an hour outside the city yeah, or something like that, right? Land. Yeah. Yeah. It has a nice name, Terrebonne mm-hmm. Parish. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terrebonne. Getting, no. Terrebonne or Terrebonne. Yeah, getting out there, of course, that means so this is a Southern Gothic movie. Mm. We're going to have a lot of Spanish moss and just it's a damp, wet movie yeah. mm-hmm. with water everywhere. And we don't actually see gators, but we know they're watching us. Oh, they're there. Yeah. They're, they're everywhere. There. Yeah. They're I was a little there. nervous for her when she was in that boat. I yeah. Was like, yeah. Well, it's the same. Whenever they're out in that backyard, I'm like, they're a little too close to that water. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They are like, this is straight up Snake on a swamp. Snake-wise and mm-hmm. gator-wise. Like yeah. the backyard, the garden backs up to a swamp. Yeah. It's yeah. got that green, yeah. whatever, Mossy. algae, moss stuff that's always on the top of yeah. a swamp. Well, it's yeah. this big ass house too. I mean, it's like uh, thirty you know. rooms, thirty rooms. Yeah. It's that's like a big th- ass, house. three stories and an attic, right? Yeah, yeah. it's massive. Mm-hmm. It is a plantation house. Mm-hmm. Out in the middle of out, just overgrown everything. Bye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um. So so what's the setup? What does she find when she gets there to the house? Who's she caring for? John Hurt. What's his problem? <laughs> well, he's had a stroke. He just that's what he that's just what came out told. of the. Uh, Two evil eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's what <laughs> that's it looks correct. like. He just stumbled out of that. Uh, no, according to his uh, wife and also the estate um, lawyer, he has had a stroke. He cannot speak. He cannot move. He cannot walk. He's just totally immobile and just waiting for death. Essentially. But he really, really looks like he wants to say something. Doesn't, yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> the whole yeah. this movie because it's John Hurt. Is that why? Is that why? Like you cast John Hurt and something like we need. He's not going to say anything, but we need a right. fucking actor to we, yeah, emote. Right. An actor. Yeah. Some face acting. Yeah, he does yeah. a lot of face acting. He does really he does. say any lines in this movie? Yes. Not many, very many. Like, yeah, third, <laughs> in the third act, he says a few things, yeah. Yeah, yeah but even that is like yeah, uh, like me. Sean was doing yeah. over there. Yes. It's uh, it's an acting line. His eyes are always darting around, though. Like So yeah. it's like it's not like he's just spacing out. He's like watching what's happening yeah. and kind seems to be somewhere it's like, aware. It's oh, yeah. like in What Lies Beneath when Michelle Pfeiffer mm. gets the the paralyzing stuff. Yes. And she knows everything bathtub, that's going on. And she's, she's like, like darting, her eyes are darting around, she's looking around, she can't move, but she's very aware of what's happening. It's like that. Mm-hmm. Is that what you took it as when you first saw this movie? Well... Because this is, a, I guess, the question. The movie, watching it tonight, knowing where it's going, it's kind of interesting to watch the construction of where it's leading you mm-hmm. at different right. points. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. each act of the movie basically presents like it could be this right right, right. in right. the beginning she finds a house uh, or uh, sorry a door uh, a locked door hidden door in the attic and there's something knocking on the back of the door and you're right. like okay these people have somebody locked up in that sure. room that doesn't yeah. pan out no and <laughs> then we get uh, at some point right there's the talk of ghosts because uh-huh. we're in a haunted house, right? Uh-huh. There's ghosts of the people who lived here before. Right? Yeah. And then that doesn't pan out. It like keeps on keeping keeps on. Keeps guessing. Yeah. But the one consistent thing, I think, is that you always know whatever is going on, John Hurt is the one that knows. 
Like he's yeah. got the secret, even though he's not saying anything. Like you definitely get the vibe that he's the one that knows what's happening. Well, what did you think had happened to him? I mean, when you free, first saw this, uh, you know, because I think uh, two of us here, Michaela and Sean, you guys have just seen this tonight. Yeah, yeah I've never seen, seen this before. And it like. I didn't even know what it was about either. I had seen the poster. The I had seen the DVD it. cover. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it was like Kate Hudson and a skeleton key is all I know. Yeah, all yeah. I knew was New Orleans and there's a skeleton key and that's literally all I knew. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a SARS garden in this movie. I know, but that's the best way to go into a movie. Because well, sure, yeah. then you're yeah. like, it could be anything. It could be a haunted house. It could be this or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But us being 16, almost 17 years on, some of the stuff's a little apparent. Mm-hmm. I think, to me, mm-hmm. anyway, even watching it for the first time tonight. So when did, uh, so, well, okay. Well, I, yeah. mean, I, I guess you d- I'm just going to say you don't cast the SARS guard as, as one of only three people in this movie and not expect him to have an impact on the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Yeah. Saw it. Yeah, the Maybe cast is coming. so small. It's like, he's, right. it's and like, like, he's just too overly involved for what his role in the movie is. Mm-hmm. Like, he is an estate lawyer, but he is getting so meddled into these people's lives beyond his job duties that it's like okay he has ulterior motives he has to because i wondered if that was like were they going because uh the family's wealthy you know are they wealthy i mean they have this big ass house and i guess uh ben which is the john hurt character had a an antique business or something mm-hmm. and so it's which like he runs out of the other 18 rooms of the house yeah and so yeah, then it's that, a, like the thing. SARS guard is on retainer to like this wealthy family and he's one of the you know like that's I the deal thing with if you and, know anything about real estate even though it's a big ass house, it's a big ass house on a swamp in Louisiana, so it's yeah. not going to be as expensive as you'd think it mm-hmm. would be. It's going to be, yeah, it, it's not. Gonna, they're probably not as wealthy as. Yeah, uh, who knows <laughs> if they have running water out there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he's really involved as being in like too he's involved there all the time. Very well, and he's so insistent on Kate Hudson taking the job. He like c- keeps talking her into it when she doesn't want to do it, and he keeps. Uh, kind of shooing away her worries or any yeah. problems she may have with that. He's yeah. just like, ah, oh, no, nah, it'll be fine. Everything will be fine. Yeah, but he's got a pretty good hook, though, because it's like, well, you know, we've had people out here before and they keep quitting, mm. you know, and so we need somebody who's actually going to stick around. And she is like the prime uh, candidate for this because she has the this uh, sense of obligation mm-hmm. because of what happened to her dad. Yeah. Right. So that's like plugged in. She's going to kind of adopt Ben in a way yes. and mm-hmm. take care of him. But really, like, really, she does. She's like, I'm, I'm claiming this man. It feels mm-hmm. like early. Yeah. Or it feels like she's very declaring it when she hasn't been there long. I don't know. She's very. She gets very bossy in this house, I think. Like, she comes in, she's like, well, this is mine, and this is mine. Yeah, how much time does this movie take place yeah. over? Is it like four days? Because that's what it feels like. At one point, they say that it's been a few days and like she really hasn't been there long no and she like so she's been there like three days she's putting up mirrors and going it letting herself in rooms she's not supposed to go into right. she's really bad at her job honestly like yeah she's really she bad starts out the movie and this happens it, the more we see these movies the more it just seems to happen all the time that people are just walking through houses like just letting themselves in yeah just like oh we're in the south i can just yeah. walk in hospital southern hospitality it's just like <laughs> why do you people keep walking into people's houses she does that like four times in this movie just walks into a stranger's house and, yeah, and then gets room and starts looking and shit. Yeah. So they walk into the blind lady's room and yeah. she's looking through her records. She's like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. She's I like, like think because people... her attitude is like, no, I'm important. I will figure this out. Yeah. Like, that is her attitude She's from this. Jersey, I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. Hoboken, yeah. yeah. Or maybe the, all the good people from the South, they're listening to us right now going like, what? They listen to these Northerners who are all like upset about people walking through their houses. And... Well, that's true. <laughs> down there and still unlock their front door. I don't know. Yeah. No, because isn't their whole thing in the South like, you come on my property, I'll shoot you? Like, isn't that their perspective on a lot of things? So, like, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Uh, you can email us. Let us know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and contact us. Oh, wait, you're in the South. You don't have internet. I'm kidding, <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. They got wow. dial up down there still. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's not hop li- on your dial up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. AOL. Not our make sure your mom doesn't pick <laughs> up. Sorry. Her. But I, I will say I'll play devil's advocate. She knows that she's going to a hospice interview and it's a very large house. She's probably thinking they're not answering the door because they're probably very preoccupied with the person they're taking care of. So maybe I should just let myself in. Yeah, it's less that and more I'll later on the blind lady's house that she just straight up bursts into right. the totally agree going through her records. <laughs> yeah. Interrogating that poor woman yeah. for no yeah. reason. Because there is, uh, well, I guess we can lead into this by she eventually does find an attic room. Now, Jenna Rowland, so is uh, the um, uh, the lady of the house. Right. And she seems not very welcoming at first for reasons which become apparent later. There's a whole bunch of, like, a layer of stuff that's happening during that first uh, meeting. Um, 
but then kind of sets her up because even you guys were like that's a setup to go up <laughs> into this attic room so yeah. it's like she wants her to find this attic room mm -hmm. what does she find in the attic room this is also the room where apparently ben suffered his stroke so something happened up there right well at so. first she can't get into the room the first time she goes up into the attic she finds there's a locked room and there's like shaking the door shaking and there's like rattling um but she cannot get in the room her skeleton key will not unlock the door so she the first time up she doesn't get in she doesn't know what's in there then but she comes back and the second time she like unclogs the lock or whatever yeah this is I, yeah i don't know what was going on there i mean it's something... well it's a setup for later on in the movie i mean a key has a part of a key is broken oh, off that's yeah right. that's why right, that's you right. can't open it and then right. you find out later I, yeah as a kid who grew up in a house with locks and skeleton keys like that it is super easy to pick mm. them you just get, the gaps are so big right, and yeah. it's so easy it is very big yeah. you have to i uh, I always had like it because they were so damn old and yeah. kind of stuck in their way. Like mm -hmm. you had to get that key and like twist that. Yeah. Stuff. But yes, their mechanisms I don't mm -hmm. think are too complicated. Yeah. So and she, Jenna Rowland says she hasn't been in that room since uh, the no house. No one's was been in that room in sixty years. Yeah. Why? <laughs> why wouldn't you go into a room in your own house? But we're gonna find this out. I, know. I was like, it? that's bullshit. Because I would spend my yeah. life trying to get that. Door I was saying this is kind of Holly's dream. Right it's, oh God, this is oh, absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. my dream. Do you have any uh, <sighs> reclusive aunts or uncles in anywhere that are gonna leave you something that'll make your day at this point? No. No, no rich haunted mansions in your future. No. I'm sorry. I know. Very sorry. Well, let me ask you. I have well, an aunt that just collects a lot of cats and plants. Oh, that's not the same. No, it's not. Mm. That's going to be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry, they're going to eat her, and then the rest of the plants will overtake. As the it'll be like the, it'll yeah. be like that um, short and creep show, the lonesome death of Jordy Barrel. It's going to be your aunt's house, except oh, with cats, fuck. plants, and cats everywhere. Sorry, Bobby. <laughs> 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 it's depressing. Did she, does she listen? No, Colin's like, okay. we're, we're talking about a movie. <laughs> dark turn, dark turn. Uh, okay, so what what does she find in the room? What is the room? It is a voodoo hoodoo room, mm -hmm. Colin. What's a hoodoo room? Black magic. That's different than voodoo? Actually, yes. Because yes, the hoodoo, hoodoo is the magic, right? Voodoo is a religion. It is a Haitian religion. Mm -hmm. Hoodoo is native to uh, Louisiana, native to New Orleans, and it is a black magic practice right. that is separate from religion. They say, which separate I thought I, I'm glad. Like I usually hate scenes like this in a movie, but I think this movie really needed it. Like, I agree, and I yeah. thought that they explained it very well and very concisely in the scene. I agree. I, a couple years ago, the Field Museum in Chicago had like a Haitian voodoo exhibit, yeah. and I went to, and it was yeah. I learned a lot. Yeah, coming out of it being like, That's oh, awesome. this is not at all what I thought it was, but it's still really interesting. You That's know, really cool. Yeah. I want to go to that. So it was really, it was really interesting. Yeah. Pretty intense at moments too. Yeah, they had like videos of like ceremonies and stuff you could watch, and uh. it was that's intense. Pretty intense. Yeah. yeah. Is hoodoo a made up thing for this movie? No, or is no, it a real no. Thing? It is a real thing. Okay, mm -hmm. yes. it's got a goofy name. I'm just if you believe hoodoo. in it, mm -hmm. it's real. It's probably a matter of translation over time through so different languages. I imagine is why it comes out with a name like that. Yeah. Especially because they said it's an amalgamation of all these different kind of yeah, cultures. It's influence, yeah, so. influences from different areas. Mm -hmm. so. True. Is that hoodoo, hoodoo or that voodoo that you do so well? What's that song? Okay, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so they got a hoodoo room. Mm -hmm. But we're not supposed to suspect that this is Jenna Rowland's hoodoo room because no. she offers an explanation on why that room is here. Did you buy it? And what is it? What'd she say? Yeah. Why is that room there? Oh, this is when she oh, tells from the, the story. Yeah. From the previous. She tells the story of the original owners who had servants, and the servants were into hoodoo. Um, and that was their room. Yeah. Yeah. What happened to the servants? Father Justice. And Justify. Justify, that's it. And Mama Justify, Cecile. Mama Cecile. Or is it Papa? Because you're in the South. I know. And in voodoo. I'm totally it's always, It is Papa. Yeah. Papa Justify and Mama Cecile. I just put something together in my head. What'd you put together, Sean? I'll save it for later. Okay. <laughs> Build the this movie, suspense. A little piece of movie making sense. Like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. It. okay. It doesn't yeah. help, but no. All right, cool. me a little bit. Yeah. The, the actual story of what happened there is like uh, shocking and like a horrifying kind of thing. Yeah. When you actually go like, oh, Jesus, horrifying. those kids. <laughs> like, got yeah. fucked in like a major way. Yeah. Um, this is messed up. Okay. So what happened? So this is the story that's going to set up like we don't Caroline doesn't know this yet, but obviously we're being presented. This as mm -hmm. a flashback in the movie. Which, so we this, know it's important this should be the movie. This is this is your movie right here. This is dark as fuck. This should be the movie. Like yeah. I actually thought during the scene, this movie would be a good double feature with the original Candyman. 
Because I was like, I see a lot of parallels between these movies. Mm -hmm. These these white, blonde, white women investigating these like atrocities committed against minorities in the past and how they haunt us now in the future. Like, I was like, there it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could Could it be a triple feature with Get Out? Yeah, it could. (laughs) Yeah. If you want to do All Night of the Drive-In, you can tack on Stepford Wives, too. There it is. There we go. (laughs) There's your quadruple. Mm -hmm. You took us five minutes to think that up. (laughs) Get it together, you local. Let us program your (laughs) your showings. Let us help you. You can email us. (laughs) Saturday Night Freak Show, yahoo.com. Um, okay, so the servants were uh, right. caught apparently during a big party. Yeah, so there's um, like a big Gatsby style party in like the 20s, mm-hmm. which I wanted to be at. And that you party. know how white people get when they're partying in the 20s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ruthless. Liquored up. Mm-hmm. Liquored up. Liquored up. Uh, so they catch, they go upstairs trying to find these kids. Right, because they make a drinking game out of finding the kids. Yeah, as you do. The kids aren't in. I mean, okay, first of all, it's a 30 if, I'm at, if, I'm at a, if I'm at a party. <laughs> this is fun. I I imagine they play this game every night, but it just comes in handy this night. I'm sorry, but if I'm at a party and it's like late at night and I'm like, oh, you know, it's been fun about to go home. I'm not going to go try to wake up your kids to say bye to them. Like, that's already weird that these people want to say bye to the kids first. That's already weird. I don't know that I've ever partied at someone's house where they had kids sleeping. I don't think I've ever. No, no, no. You don't, you don't I don't think parents, I've ever. You? you didn't have thirty rooms. And I don't. See, I don't seek out kids. parties where there's going to be kids present. Well, Let's sure, just say yeah. that. But like, I don't think I've ever partied with someone where like Shh, kids are sleeping in the next room. Like, no, but they I don't, don't do that. Ever they just take them to you like. Well, their house is so yeah. big. They, it, can't they can. Anything, they right? can have a party and have their kids sleeping. Their house is so big. Right. Well, the party goers come upon, I think, into the attic room and find a black magic ceremony taking place where apparently Mama Justify and Papa Justify and Mama Cecile are doing something with the kids. Teaching the babies voodoo hoodoo. Right. This is what Jenna Rollins tells us. This turns out not to be actually the case. Mm -hmm. And so then, uh, enraged by this, the party goers take the two servants out and lynch them out yeah. in the back. Which is intense and horrifying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then set them on fire. And yeah. set them on like fire. Before, before they're dead. Like as lot. part of the party. Like everyone's yeah. enjoying it like this is like a party trick. Because then yeah. because as, as <laughs> Janet Roland says after after they're dead they're like and the party was over. I'm like yeah. <laughs> Why is this? Yeah. Sounds like it was over a long time ago bitch. Jesus. Yep. That's intense. Hey you won't be fun for this party? Let's traumatize these kids and commit a hate crime. <laughs> You yeah. know, like because you assume that the I mean, kids that was were, every other day back in the day. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. The yeah. kids were probably like, "This is their nanny and uh, people looking yeah. after them," and mm-hmm. so, but yeah. black magic, black magic has to go. Well, and the racial thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so <laughs> just, just a little bit of a race thing. Just that yeah, little just thing. a little bit. Yeah. Um, so Papa Justify does play like a big part in this movie. We're kind of introduced to him. Uh, through like um osmosis almost right it's all that heat and humidity yeah the heat through. and humidity but there's <laughs> always the there's these recordings that are being played at, like she goes to a gas station and they're yeah. playing like uh um like a recording of like a, a voodoo ceremony that he participated in right and then she finds a recording of a, a voodoo ceremony the conjure of sacrifice right mm-hmm. yeah and it's like okay so clearly we're thinking jenna rollins is well, she actually, the reason that she gives it that um, she didn't want to go in the attic is because, right, you That's don't go room. into one of those rooms and just start moving things around. Like, you're going to end up, you know, cursing yourself or something. Mm-hmm. And then she tells us, says that there's ghosts. And basically, the reason there's no mirrors in the house are because when you look in the mirrors, you right. see the ghost. So at this point, it Which... becomes a haunted house movie. Mm. Do we buy it? How... I actually just put together what that actually means based on the end of the movie. Right. It means something I, completely I'm, different. I was, like, I was like, so you're both having epiphanies. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Sometimes you gotta great. talk through it. So, yeah. if they looked in the mirror, would they see the other people? No, they... It, so... I, yeah, we can gotta, we spoil we the spoil end of the movie? Okay. Let's just so, like, go for it. It'd be like in Get Out if they looked in the mirror, right? So, like, your consciousness is seeing a different body because it's been switched. Right. So, like, that's why they're freaking out, because it's not what they uh, think they look like. And mm-hmm. the mirror is the object of magic in this case, mm-hmm. because it's what true. has actually happened, spoiler, is that Mom, uh, Papa Justify and Mama Cecile did 
do this sac- this ritual mm-hmm. and stole the bodies of these kids, right. right? So it was actually the kids who were like all of a sudden transferred into new bodies, and drug out in the murder. backyard, and set on fire. Yep. <laughs> <up. laughs> As if it couldn't get any darker. Couldn't yeah. vocalize it, right? Yeah. So okay, yeah. Uh, the voodoo the people are that. like yeah. Sean's face. Well, no, because yeah. that, well, that makes sense with the thing I figured out <laughs> yeah. earlier. Yeah. Black yeah. magic. You're right. so it's just like whoa. Yeah. So it's horrifying. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's horrifying. a different body and then just, well, being hung burned alive. Yeah. So these kids remember. have the house, right? Because apparently their parents mysteriously kill themselves like a week later or something like mm-hmm. that. Because this is the story we're getting. But in reality, the kids killed the parents, most likely, mm-hmm. and then lived there, brother and sister, in the house until 1962, at which point they sold the house to... I assume the uh, Jenna Rollins and Better John Hurt people, characters yeah. who were younger yes. and they yeah. stole their bodies. Yep. And mm-hmm. so now they've been living as them mm-hmm. and now they want new bodies. Right. And so we find out later that Skarsgård is actually Papa Justify mm-hmm. and Jenna Rollins has yet to make the switch. They've been trying to audition girls by bringing them in to be hospice workers. So they're going to take their bodies. So mm-hmm. is that the only reason John Hurt is still alive? Is because they need someone to come in and care for him, but they're keeping him... Right, so that's my him question, too. So we can't say... So this is... A because they're clearly like drugging him, because they well, see, yeah, oh, did you give, it, did you give him his remedy? Yeah, his, his remedy's remedy, at 9 right? o'clock yeah. in the morning. And yeah. yeah, so they're, like, drugging him. But yeah, that's otherwise, otherwise, why else is he still alive? I was going to say, that's risky. Because they're, the only thing... I mean, you know, it doesn't seem like there is any other reason. But mm-hmm. General Owens does say at the end when they're trying to convince Kate Hudson to go to the, you know, eventually go to the attic mm-hmm. where the thing's going to happen. She says something. Sarsgaard's like, is everything ready? And she's like, no, I haven't. I can't do anything until we know where he is mm-hmm. because she's hidden him. Well, it could be just Why? it could be just because after the transfer takes place, they need to know where the dude is to explain to the authorities well, didn't they, what's going on. Didn't here. she even say we can't let him get away? She said something to the effect of, like, we can't let him get away or yeah, something. Yeah, they need to know yeah. where he is. Yeah. So maybe right. it's just as simple as that. They it just got to yeah, because she will know him. after the switch. Yeah. Interesting. But what... So at the end of this movie, when those two are sent off in the, in the ambulance, then what's stopping them from just, like, They've been telling the fixed, whole story? Or hexed or fixed or whatever. We find out it's called fixing. They, you go... They, oh, that's why the sewing. They've put a spell on them so they can't speak. Right. Okay. It's like they're it's it's yeah. Mentally they're they've been stitched up. Yeah. Billy Butcherson. It's cool to That's watch right. the movie again with this in mind because there's a lot of interplay between Sarsgaard and Jenna Rollins that reads differently, mm-hmm. you know, when right. she walks in on the two of them in the bedroom when they were talking about like, you know, we gotta mm-hmm. do something about Ben. Oh, look how, you know, cozy you two are. Oh, You're the yeah. only woman in my life, Violet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Right. It's like right, just right, their right. husband and wife. Right. Um Interesting. And also when she when she gets there and um, she is making comments about Kate Hudson not having a southern accent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's very upset about that. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. she's like, this is what I'm going to spend the rest of, you know, the next yeah, whatever right. so many years from in this some body. <laughs> girl from New Jersey. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's very much her attitude about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, shit. You're making me want to go through and watch it again. Yeah. And that's I how I feel. Too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just keep bringing up everything. So, <laughs> so, it, so what's the like. How are they throwing the legality off of this situation then? Is it just that like because he was the estate lawyer, he put the estate into their name so like there yeah. won't be any legal issue? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's basically how they're going to play it off is that they're going to leave the house to Caroline, the gotcha. Kate Hudson character, okay. and just inherit it and so something's going to happen to the old folks. They're going <laughs> to they're just going to okay. die, yep. you know. Seems like there should be a lot more murder just so there is no loose ends. Exactly. Like the old people are loose ends that, like, could come back to bite them in the ass. I yeah, that's why. That's kind of how I feel, too. Like, why not just throw them in the swamp and let the gators have at them? Yeah, like, why is that it, not it the seems... last image where she's taking a sawed-off leg and just throwing it to a gator? Yeah. I mean, I am asking for the Lake Placid. Lake Placid, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess because you do have... The upside is, you know, when they... When, when the spirits i guess are uh the older folks they have the wherewithal to actually write out all this legal stuff and get it filed he's able to like Mm -hmm. make all this happen uh you know legally so the transfer will uh, Mm -hmm. occur and then they can finally go like okay at this point (laughs) we can get them out of the out of the picture yeah Mm -hmm. they're kind of bad at covering their tricks though because at the end of the movie when kate hudson's friend shows up that she called (laughs) she plays that off 
horribly. Like if someone says, oh, you call me, you just pretend like, yeah, I did. I'm so glad you're here now. And she can't even do that. Mm -hmm. Like they're bad at playing these parts already. But I like that because they have each other. They're able to like one can run interference for the right. other, yeah. and because they're not, you know, like husband and wife, you know, he's the lawyer, so he speaks from like an outside perspective as far as Jill, the friend, is concerned. Right. You right. Know? It's like, oh, okay, who's this guy? You know, yeah. right? Oh, he's a lawyer. He seems official. Like, uh, right. yeah, I'll listen to him. Yeah. Which so, is why it's not suspect that the house goes to her instead of him. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. but they, can they ever be together? Like, yeah, otherwise that'll sure. look fishy. No. Right. Well, who's going to come nobody's, visit that house? Nobody's getting like, murdered gonna here. Know. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Gonna know. <laughs> These old folks are at the end of their run, right? I mean, they're not going to last that. So, but that's but what they're counting on. I guess I guess they're hoping on those spells staying strong for the rest of their <laughs> yeah. years. And they're hoping they'll go to that hospice center where no one gives a fuck about them. So just, then once yeah. they die, they're just like, okay, yeah. they're, good, they're yeah. gone. And I guess this is the thing. It's like if you're in that position where you're trying to extend your life by stealing someone else's, it's like that doesn't mean you're immortal. Like you can die oh, sure. of any kind of right. incident. Right. You know, so, and you have to like try and so like this whole thing is predicated on the notion of in order to get it to work, the spell to work, the victim, ha- the intended victim has to believe in hoodoo. Yes. Right. Which you're taking a very modern Kate Hudson and you're going like, okay, somehow I have to get you to believe that all this crazy shit is real. Mm-hmm. So how? So this is what the mechanism of the movie is. Uh, General Rollins and Sarsgaard are playing this game to basically eventually get her to that room. Mm-hmm. And how much can go wrong? And things do kind of go wrong, but they still end up getting her to that room. Mm-hmm. But do. what? how do we get Kate Hudson to start believing that hoodoo is really a thing? Because it doesn't matter if she believes. It matters if Ben believes. But I think... I think the process they went with, I think the more she sees them reacting to what she's doing, like she's, she says she doesn't believe in it, but she's using their rules and their spells against them, most with the brick dust and everything. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they're counting on. Yep. If she keeps using it and she sees they believe it, she will eventually believe. Because she goes at some point, it's, I think her first buy in is she believes that Ben, Mm -hmm. um, he thinks he's been hexed. It's a psychosomatic illness mm-hmm. that basically thinks he's been hexed. And so therefore, if you did a spell on him, you could unhex him. Right. So she goes to a voodoo, like a witch doctor mm-hmm. and the witch doctor says, like, you got to take like, this is the spell. Mm-hmm. And so she performs this in front of Ben. And then that is kind of, she sees an effect. And so I think this is kind of like, okay, it's not for me. But I have to do like she's casting a spell at that yes. point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's she, like she has a, she a big bird feather. <laughs> she's she's you know uh, 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 holy watering the house basically. She's like fucking yeah. free this house. And later there's the idea that like uh, the whole brick dust thing, you can lay it across the the threshold. It comes of the back in a big way. Yeah, but the setup is that it's like you 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 put that down, and someone who means you harm can't cross it. Right. And so she's constantly seeing, like, you know, even when she lays it down, Jenna Rollins can't cross the threshold, mm-hmm. or Sarsgaard can't cross the threshold. Right. And so this is the buy-in, right? It's mm-hmm. like by the end of it, it's like she's like, I know that this works, so this is how I'm going to protect myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's- Which does not make for an interesting, like, third act suspense scene. Like... Watching someone just lay down like lines of dust is not not the most intense thing. Well, to watch. they punch it up. There's lightning and the cameras right. flying down yeah. hallways, and yeah. she's dumping dust all over the place, trying to keep them out. I thought during the first scene when she's trying to get her to come over the threshold, I didn't know. I'm trying. I was trying to figure out what trick the filmmakers were trying with us, what they're trying to tell us, because usually scenes like this they tend to. They want to make the character look suspicious. So Mm -hmm. obviously she wouldn't cross it. But they do that whether the person is being malevolent or not. So at this point, I didn't know, because I don't know what way we're going with whether what's her name is innocent or she's in on it. Like, that's what we're still trying to figure out. Well, I guess the fact that she can't cross the threshold means that she means her harm in some kind of way, even though she's being, you know, kindly. You know that she did something to John Hurt. You just don't know what. Right. You know, it's maybe it's I don't know. Maybe it happens too early that moment happens too early because then later on they're just both not being like um oh what am i trying to say like she's not being suspicious they interact later on after those moments right like you figure out 
Well, after if, if if you figured out this person meant you harm, it feels like we should be on a faster track towards the end of the movie at this point. Well, she's at that point when that happens, we're in the third act, and uh, Kate Hudson's like, "I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna get Ben out of here mm-hmm. right tonight. We're doing it. We're getting him out." And so then that's when she sees the the, the brick dust thing works, but so she's got to play it off and drug uh, Jenna Rollins. To knock her out so she can actually get Ben out of the house. She pours a lot in that drink. Yeah, so there's like a tense dinner scene, right? Where you're like, that's where you're saying it should be. Like, it's like now we know Jenna Rollins couldn't go across the brick dust. Right, yeah, I think we're trying to draw out the same moment of suspense in two different, I, I, it feels like two different parts. Like, no, we know there's malevolence. Or maybe I, we didn't before and it's confirmed now. Especially because she made her gumbo and she's trying to get her to eat it. But she's also trying to get her to drink the other stuff and the, yeah. and the sugar cubes she injected. It's funny. He's like, you eat this. No, you drink that. No, you <laughs> eat <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't trust each other. Yeah, stalemate all. right there at the dinner table. <laughs> yeah. But, we had a long discussion while we were watching this about the, about the, the consistency the, of sugar right, cubes. Right, sugar yeah. cubes and whether you can inject them with things and how much before they melt. I don't, this is what I had the most questions about. Yeah. I have the, how sugar cubes hold up. Yeah. As uh, long as they're not overly saturated. Yeah. Right. They will, they're they actually will really, the, they're really hard. They're a lot harder than you think they are. They are like, yeah. try and bite into one of those and it's it's pretty crunchy. Yeah. I got some down there. You can try Oh, oh no thanks. Sean, do you want a, do, did you want a sugar cube? <laughs> it's definitely not been injected with anything. Yeah, yeah it was just like, wow, you guys are playing the long con to kill me. <laughs> Who's replacing me? Mm-hmm. Oh, they're on the turntable there if you want. Uh, uh, but anyway, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, then there's a tense cat and mouse that happens at the end. She does get Ben out of the house. Um, and then uh, she finds out that Sarsgaard is uh, not who he said he was because in his office... He is studying beginner's law because right. he's Papa Justify going like, okay, how does the, I'm a lawyer? How now. does law work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. How do I cosplay as a lawyer? Yeah. Yeah. Cause she goes to visit him in his office and watching it again, knowing that like, he's not who he says he is. Right. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, I, I get that you're meeting him in one? the, no. <laughs> okay. I get that you're meeting him in his office, but like the minute, the minute you leave, like the other partners are like coming up going like, okay, uh, Bob, you, you totally messed this thing up. Right. right. There's yeah. some, probably some complicated <laughs> legal contract like has, language that you have to figure right. out. He has other cases. Yeah. And he's screwing up like <laughs> right. crazy. And yeah. But when she's in the office, he's like, no, no, I know what I'm That's doing. That's what I want to see. This I is the more interesting this story. Yes. See. Them taking over those bodies and, and getting used to cell phones. Papa, I want to like, see Papa. This? I want to see Papa justify going to court. Yeah. That's what yeah. I want to see. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, you want the devil's advocate, but with him as the lawyer instead yes, of Keanu. That's yeah, exactly what I want. <laughs> well, there was uh, there was also a piece like, I mean, obviously, these uh, folks have been doing this for, you know, almost a century then. Right. At this point. So Jenna Rollins at the beginning of the scene, we it's sneaky how she like injects these thoughts into Caroline's uh, perspective. She yeah. finds a book in the attic and opens it, and there's a spell that's called the uh, a Conjure of Protection. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. And then later she's seen taking that out of a book and like she's putting it in her uh, her uh, uh, pocket. And then when she gets drugged, she pulls that out. So even she's with it enough to know right. as I'm going out, as I'm going, I'm getting being drugged. I got to pull this thing out and start going like doing my product protection spell. Yeah. So Caroline will take it from me because it's not a protection spell. This is all set up. Yeah, her powers yeah. of manipulation are truly <laughs> yeah, impressive. pretty good. <laughs> truly impressive. Yeah. So when she's chased to the attic, Caroline says, like, okay, well, I got this protection spell. This will work to keep these people who are chasing after me. Oh, uh, Violet, the uh, General Rollins yes. character, mm. suffers a broken leg during... Uh, <laughs> it's pretty legs. gross. Yeah. yeah. Don't like it. Dear, I believe you broke my legs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great line. But it's interesting when you're watching this, knowing what's happening, like, it's like when, when he's trying to, you know, corral Kate Hudson, it's like... He can't injure her too badly. Right, yes. Right? Because right. he needs this body. And like when she injures Jenna Rollins, it's like, oh, that's where you're going. Like you're going to wake up with a broken leg, like yeah. right off the bat. Yeah. Um, but she gets into a room and this is back. She gets into the, uh, the, the attic, the, the hoodoo room. Oh, the yep. Hoodoo, yep. Yep. And all the candles are laid out and the mirrors and all that the stuff. The spell is ready. And she, Gets right in the middle of the circle, which yep. you probably shouldn't do. 
I think that's a bad choice. Sure. Yeah, stay yeah. out of circles. Yeah, if I it's mean, all set you, up. Unless you yourself have made them, I guess, yeah. and you know what you're you doing. A salt circle is fine. Assault. Yeah, make it out of salt. Yeah. You're good. That's yeah. fine. Because she knows at this point that she is the actual... She thinks through a good portion of the movie that Ben is the intended target, right? Yes. She learns that hoodoo, you can, through the sacrifice, you can steal someone's years, mm-hmm. right? And so she thinks that Jenna Rollins is somehow going to kill Ben and steal his his, <laughs> his, his remaining years. What years he has left? Right, which uh, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It'd be it'd be funnier if you could steal like if you steal an eighty year old's ears, you're going to get shitty years. But if you steal a twenty four twenty four year old's ears, you'll have better years. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Like the right. energy will be better if it's <laughs> yeah. not an old person. Right. right. Like maybe leave his alone. Yeah. yeah. It's like he's got like three years tops. Like, like years. Just stealing, I was going to say months. Is it a life force? I don't know. They specifically do say years. And you're like he hasn't got that much more. No, to go. Don't no, feel no, like no, it, no. So, but then she finds out that they have been stalking her. She is the intended target mm-hmm. of this, and so she creates this spell of protection. Which it turns out is actually like what does General and say? It's like the only thing. Like where'd you get that? It's like, only who protecting gave it to you, you from leaving. Yeah. yeah, that's what she said. So she yeah. basically created a spell that locked she, her in the middle of this circle. Yeah. She drew her own cage on a floor. Yeah, yeah. And then there's like this whole transference with mirrors, which I think this comes back to that somehow you're trapping the person's soul in a mirror. We see General Rollins like deflate, kind of, or whatever, drop to the floor. And the mirror crashes mm-hmm. upon. Um, with the soul of Mama Cecile in it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Crashes into Kate Hudson, and that's how the transfer takes place. There's not, like, a whole lot of, like, actual supernatural shit in this movie. Right? Not really. No. Like, visualized. No. 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 I think that, I don't know, maybe that helps. I don't know. Like, there's I, no think, I think if they did, they would turn into more of a ghost movie, which is what I don't think they yeah. want. Right. Yeah, I think that, I think it was intentional to not have much, because they they wanted you to... They wanted to, you know, point you one direction when it's really another, but they didn't want to throw you off so much that it comes off as a ghost movie. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think it's scarier if you if you're the characters are taking the hoodoo and voodoo part of it seriously. Yeah, I think yeah. that helps. And turning it into uh, visualizing more of that, I probably would have made it more. Of a ghost not, movie. I mean, I guess in the end we do get like you know the phantoms are appearing in the mirror, but there's not like you know it crashes on her and then there's like. You know, CGI or, you know, uh, swirling, you know, magic mist, you know, right. Sort of, yeah. Going throughout the room or whatever. I mean, it's all just like well, you don't even know what really happened. You know, I mean, I guess through the setup, you know what's happened, but there's no uh, overt. Was there was there a lack of CGI for you, Colin? Is that what you were missing? I'm applauding. Will it make you feel better to know that Swamp was entirely CGI? Are you serious? What? Totally serious. Really? Yep. Get the fuck out. Yep. Well, it looks pretty good then, because right. it holds up pretty well. Wait, yeah. There are some shots you're just like, that's. Are digital. you saying this whole movie was shot in a soundstage? Uh, the house is real. The swamp was CGI. Get the f- really, <laughs> really. Okay, I was convinced. There was a couple scenes when she was setting up like the ritual stuff, where it was clearly sped up like three yeah, times. Are, speed. There is some weird. Why is thing, oh, speed yeah. timing yeah. stuff in the, yeah. in the in the ritual? It was because she got the the stuff blown on her. If you do a voodoo movie, at some point somebody has to come up with their palm and blow dust in your face. Yeah. Yes. And so she was under. Although she doesn't take the blood sport eyes wide open approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So when, whenever it's cutting <laughs> to her perspective, it has this kind of ramped up, I don't know, there's something. I don't know, it. but no, there were shots of her like drawing the chalk circle on the ground that were sped up yeah, like there's some three sped up times. Shots, like, and it looks, it's really jarring and weird. Yeah, and, and I've, I've been there because you, sometimes you're like, ooh, I got to speed up just enough to cover this gap until the next scene, but you go over it just too much. It's so it's like, unnatural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah it happens. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess a question that I have for you is when, you know, on watching this movie, when did you start putting together what was actually going on? I mean, I, I guess that's the thing. I liked it. Colin, right now. Yeah, that was like five minutes ago when we just, talked yeah, about it. Yeah. The epiphanies you yeah, heard, there yeah, it is. Yeah. That's when I figured it out. I mean, I knew, I knew uh, Sarsgaard was, I knew he was going to be a bad guy. Okay, yeah. but just not obviously. how. You don't know not what he's how, doing. No, the intricacies of, of... Who took the bodies when and all that stuff? Right. I didn't clear up until talking through it right here. He was too smarmy to not be a bad guy. Right. It, like, yeah. he had to have been. He was too smooth, you know? Yeah. Like, and especially because, I mean, they dropped one clue where you're just like, okay, that 
obviously settled. And there's only like Wait, six people in this whole movie, right. so when he wouldn't cross a threshold with the red eye. He's like, no, I'm a gentleman. But then, does but then he, he does. But then he does because yes. he doesn't mean any harm to that old woman. I right. Guess that's a, so she, why? I mean, you're putting it there just to why? Why throw suspicion on the character? I mean, maybe mm -hmm. it, other people didn't pick it up. I don't know. It seems suspicious it to seems me. They show they show his feet and they stop before over going over the brick yeah, line. Yeah, seems very suspicious. And there's also a the shot of Jenna Rollins where she's like napping in a chair and it's all thundery and lightning and uh, um, Kate Hudson sneaking through the house and her eyes open and it's like one of those like oh shit she's yeah. the bad guy shot. Yeah, you know. So I guess that's the thing. It's like when. You know, at what point, like, were the revelations happening as they were happening on screen? Or were you ahead of the movie going like, well, they stole the bodies and they're trying to steal her body. And Oh, no, I think uh, for me, it was I was not up with this movie. Certain parts you could figure it out. But yeah, I was surprised. I'm surprised, I guess. Yeah. Or at least I not surprised. The details were not clear for me. Yeah, that, I, I would agree it, with that. Like, yeah, no, I know what they're doing, and it seems kind of like I know where they're going. They did get me because I thought that Violet, uh, I thought they were setting up Violet too much to be the bad guy. I'm like, well, uh, it, I thought the filmmaker was trying to trick me into thinking she was bad, and that uh, the big evil would come out of the shadows at the end. I thought it was Sarah's guard, so that's where I was going with it. I thought that's what they were trying to do. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah, no, that sounds <laughs> <Wake> correct. <up. laughs> okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's how I felt. Yeah, uh, when when Jenna Rollins tells the story of what happened with Papa Justify and Mama Cecile, I figured it out then. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. Because <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I gotta admit, this one I did not like. Usually, I'm pretty good. <laughs> But this one, like, that surprised me. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. I like being caught off guard, and it doesn't happen all that yeah. often. Mm -hmm. now, but it wasn't until this viewing that I real like, I knew what happened, but I didn't really think about the fact that the kids were murdered immediately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, like when, yeah, when, yeah, they, yeah. when they showed that little flashback there at the end, yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck. When they like, showed that, I was like, oh, shit, these that's people the kids. are horrible. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, if like I may have gone the rest of my life, if I had just seen this by myself and then not had a discussion. Right. There, not knowing that, because that yeah. makes that. Ten times more horrific. This, right. this was my second Woo. time seeing it. So the second time around watching, I was like, "Oh shit, that's the kids!" Like, yeah, it, yeah, that yeah. Was, oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it. Yeah, you do have to go back and because certain stuff makes more sense after you've gone through it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fuck you, Aaron Kruger. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> a rewatch. Fuck you, those. genius. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch, oh, you did it. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, how does it wrap up? I mean, I guess we already kind of talked about it. Um, yeah. So the transfer is once again successful. And they now have their new bodies, which is Peter Sarsgaard and Kate Hudson's bodies. And the uh, the two older people go to a nursing home. Yeah, where looking they at die. each other. <laughs> yeah. where it's like now yeah. you're like, oh, fuck. Look, yeah. it's like now we know what happened to him. Nah. Yeah. She's in the same position. And they just kind of look at each other with their eyes. They're like, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's I'm going to look at old mute people of totally different from yeah. now on. But I also like that that last scene kind of gives you a moment. It's like the only real time in the movie that you get uh, Sarsgaard and husband. Well, I guess Papa Justify and Mama Cecile, like the together. character, yeah. together yeah. without somebody. They're not pretending. Yes. Right. They can actually talk. And to she's, each other about she's like, pissed that she's got a white body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Her accent is you're written on, aren't you? Rough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the accent is a little hard to listen to. It's it's kind of cringy. What, it, what, but what Kate Hansen's? Yes. End, yeah. Yeah. Like, Unlike the way they they like show that. The body swap has happened just by her reaching for the cigarettes and the lighter. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Yep, said, yep. I kind of dug that. Yeah, I liked yeah, it. I yeah, because it's one of those visual, you know, mm -hmm. things. Yeah. You because she it made up. it clear she's like, I smoke and I smoke a lot. Yep. And I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I th yeah, I did like that. I was just like, all right, bravo. I like, think good I'm for you, girl. <laughs> I do. I have to give begrudging respect to this movie. Fuck. Yeah, but you're 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 putting more miles on that body faster by smoking, you know? You gotta yeah, do, do yeah. that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's very true. Yeah. Also, she's, she's like, like, I'll just get a new one. Right, I'm, yeah. I'm getting a new one soon anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so what, they get, don't have to do this again for what, like another 50 years? 
I would I would start like mining, you know, setting it up ahead of time. There's got to be some way that you can be like, okay, that kid, yeah. and that kid. Yeah, but look, you don't want to. This turn into a in. death becomes her type situation. But yeah, they, they waited until apart. these people were elderly to do anything yeah, about John it. Yeah, John is like, very old. Yeah. Like, you should have got ahead of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what you it felt like. Should have a better plan set up. Because yeah. I wondered, you know, when they said they are new. At one point, they do go. Who? No, are they? they? I was not, like, no, not new, but they're they've still, been still, doing this. Well, yeah, but I still think they're like, I still think they're learning as generations it's their third go on. Time. <laughs> All right, and and it's not their. It's I, it doesn't feel like they always get their first choices either because well, yeah. it sounds like they went through like three or four yeah, other off pairs. Com- or, or, sorry, she uh, was complaining. She that he, he got that she got a, a white body, and he's like, well, the black girls never stay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and they go interview the last uh, uh, nurse that cared for him, right. you know, yes. and she's so. But that was kind of interesting too because it's like she didn't get all into the hoodoo stuff. She's just like, the house is evil, and so I left, you know, or she's whatever. She's a smart one, or just like, it doesn't have to be specific that it's hoodoo or something, but she's like, that house is evil, yeah. and I'm not that going That woman there. did something to him. Right. You know, That's like, all she needed, which yeah. is, take heed, every other character from horror movies. You don't have to get the specifics of what's going wrong. Just know that it's bad and go away. Yep. Yeah. But right. they had laid in plans for that person that fell apart. So it's, it feels like this is like a big, you know, setting this up, and... Was Sarsgaard? Well, he must have been around when they tried the last girl, and he's yeah. still trying to figure out lawyering. Yeah, right. right. So, okay. Well, I mean, that long like ago. he was an actual lawyer. Yeah, it's Papa justified. It's not a lawyer, and that's why he needed the books. Right. But Peter Sarsgaard was actually a lawyer, so they brought him in to actually do their will and everything. They just oh, so she took would him have over. seen him before, even. Yeah, we yeah, don't know exactly. if he was possessed. So, or isn't not there a law point. firm somewhere that's like, where the fuck did that guy go? Yes. You know, he's now like a missing man. person. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> or he just like I've given up my life and I'm going to live in New Orleans now. They're gonna fuck yeah. up eventually, and well, they're gonna he, have his to. His office is in New Orleans, yeah. so it's like, yeah. does he just have to now go? Like, well, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> I guess I gotta go put myself <laughs> through law school I while think... I'm pretending to practice law. Well, well, he's I probably th- just gonna be like, I've given up my practice. Probably, done. yeah. Well, see, I think the sequel is. Well, that's when we get into more get-out territory. I think they start franchising this. Like, we could do this for you. We can get you in a new body and everything. And I think he can run that more properly. It's a very Philip K. Dick idea. Yeah. But I think he can run it more properly is, through the will, through his lawyering so business. He can find prequel, people. Yeah. But yeah. I think he can find okay. people through that and be like, I got a deal for you. Yeah. Like, he can be kind of that devil character who's just like, I got a deal. that. Uh, that's where we get into the anthology movies where you find old guys who's just like, I can make you young again. <laughs> like, this is how we get there. I like it. I'm in. <laughs> Well, that may be for tipping our hand. We're going to tell you what we thought about tonight's movie uh, individually. But first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to ask the help of our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Time to lick a sugar cube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I may have picked the wrong time. Yeah. Excuse me while I just gnaw on the sugar cube right? for a Can little you bit. It? It's not bad. It's but sugar. Hard, but they're harder than you they think. They are. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have see, a favorite cow, please. Yeah. Really? That it's just man. sugar. Yeah. It's just sugar. It dissolves. Yeah. It's actually kind of like a sugar cookie. It's, it's sugar. sugar. <laughs> it's literally just sugar. Have you wished into a cube? Are you familiar with sugar? Yeah. Have you ever baked anything? Yeah. No. I thought it would. Well, never mind. Mm-hmm. All right. We should just leave all this in. I mean, yeah, 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 we should. Okay. Leave it in. Leave it in. Uh, it relates uh, to the movie. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So uh, oh. I guess we want to remind you how you can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sad Freak Show. I've never had a sugar cube before. Give me a break. Your teeth are going to be vibrating for a bit until you can brush them. It's pure sugar. Okay. Yeah, I'm supposed to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And you can get a hold of us uh, or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, The Skeleton Key. G-Money writes in and says, this is one of my go-to rainy day movies. As it is thoroughly wet throughout, Kate Hudson's yeah. shower scene <laughs> aside, fun characters oh, yeah. and the creepy backstory and setting all come together for a fun time. I now know the difference between hoodoo and voodoo, and every time I hear anyone say Caroline, I hear it in Gina Rowland's accent. They could have used more sexy netting, as I'm sure the bugs <laughs> were feasting all around that set. <laughs> Always. It's got to be Agreed. human as hell. There should be, yeah. Like you said, mosquitoes the size of your head. That is yeah. a deep Saturday Night Freak Show callback, so well done, <laughs> sir. Yeah. Netting. Yeah. Anaconda. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. was... <laughs> 
a very long time ago at this point. It's a really long time yeah. ago. So thank you, G Money, for mm-hmm. sticking around all this time. Nelson Nascimento writes in and says, I've always liked this one. It's much like the others. It seemed to get lost in the black hole of forgettable 90s and 2000s horror. It's stylish and atmospheric with a less than happy ending. It deserves and de- deserved and deserves more attention. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jacob Cotner writes in and says, I just rewatched this and had a really good time. It's not the best movie, but it's definitely different than the, than the typical ghost movie it sets up. Keep freaking. Yeah. Hey, Keep thanks. Freaking. Thanks. Thank you. CJ Lewis says, I'm looking forward to this episode. My wife loves the film and I'm personally up and down with this film, but I look forward to hearing what you guys think of it. Hey, thanks. Aww. Uh Neil Gum says, no need to justify. Justify is capitalized. So that's there you go. Uh, yeah, I like, oh, I can't like it. <laughs> he, says, <Yeah. laughs> he says this is a good one. Uh, Artie 64109 says, uh, Get Out was a retelling of this movie without the magic aspect. I mean, kind of. Kinda, there's a yeah. relation there, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Last week, we watched a movie called Shocker. Peter Gatt says, oh, we Gee, did. after listening to this episode, you didn't have a good time watching this. You should have picked Deadly Friend. Oh, that's on the. That's coming. <laughs> Again, we gotta space out the West Craven. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. right. We've already done a lot in the past, like year and a half. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Teresa Ann says the real shocker for me is how much you guys hated on this movie. To each <laughs> their own. But I still love you. Oh, thank well, you. thanks for listening. Love you too. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, "So you sell your soul to an immortal demon, and he can't fix your limp? What kind of low rent <laughs> demon did he sell it for?" <laughs> Yes, yes, I love it. that's a great point. Yeah. Some things you should like be upgraded if you. Yeah. Now, what yeah, did right? he get out of that? I don't yeah. think he got anything out of that. Yeah. He got to. He's a lot. He got he to, was, yeah. to be in t- and on television. No, that, uh, no. You drive a bulldozer. No. Yep. You know what? He's, he's worldwide. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Mr. Worldwide, Worldwide, like Pitbull. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the week before we watched the movie called Two Evil Eyes, Travis Legler writes in and says, why isn't Tom Savini working more in movies today? I know he served as a combat photographer during the Vietnam War and always felt that the fake stuff he did in movies didn't turn his stomach as much as the real stuff he did uh, take photos of. And the fake stuff was no good. I've always liked this man. Plus, he raised his grandson as his own son. I've always liked this guy. Nice. I think he retired, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, Savini, I was going to say, I don't think there's much of a call for practical horror effects does, anymore either, he's unfortunately. He's been doing work with like, the WWE lately for mm-hmm. their characters, making masks for them and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, and he um, he he runs a school, right? Like a, the Savini yeah, school, school, yeah. But it's like, is there a big demand for practical effects anymore? I think if you go back and listen to our Invasion USA episode, didn't we talk about like there was a point in time in Tom Savini's career where... He had the opportunity to go to Hollywood. It was like Greg Nicotero and yeah. Howard Berger and those guys were going, mm-hmm. and he taught those guys, and he mm-hmm. should have gone. But he had like a divorce that went bad, and he ended up with custody of either his son or grandson mm-hmm. and stayed to basically. And so he kind of missed his shot to be like a Hollywood uh. special effects guy in K&B. Right. Got it instead. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. And so at some point, yeah, he uh, retired. Uh, Brett Williams says, uh, as for a household freezer... Being big enough for a person, we recently sold a freezer that came with our house on Craigslist, and a friend of mine noted See, that it was came with the house. Yes, this so is there was thing. definitely a body in it at one point. Right, and nobody's moving that shit. Like you yeah. buy a deep freezer, the house you're in, yep. and it stays there. Well, he, but he yep. sold the house, or so he sold the freezer, and he says a friend of mine noted that it was roomy enough for a potential buyer who was also a cannibal serial killer could fit my wife and I tied up inside <laughs> and haul it away. We tested. Yeah. It. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it. Um, the week before, we watched a movie called Halloween Kills. Mark oh, wow. Harrison says, I believe the filmmakers would have liked Halloween 2 to be part of the canon. However, they needed to rule out the sibling aspect, and this deleted the entire film. Another random thing I've seen recently in the theory that Annie was Michael's target in the first movie, not Laurie, makes sense how Halloween Kills isn't about Laurie. Didn't we advance that theory on our Halloween Kills episode? You talk about that? Can't remember. I blocked it out. All right. Yeah. And Brian Scott says, I really have been loving this podcast, but your review of Halloween Kills was so cringeworthy. I don't know if you four fed off of each other's hate, but I find it hard to believe all four of you hated it that much. But he did like our Jason Lives review. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, we, we watched did. it together. We recorded immediately after I was that. Say, we had, there was no feedback. Yeah. Like yeah. We avoided everything before it. Yeah. That was a and raw that was the, we, we did that the weekend it came out. We, yeah. it, we didn't have the opportunity to be influenced by the internet be- yeah. when we watched that. I still but, hate it. 
<laughs> right. And I, I still hate it as well. Yeah. But like I think I said during the show, um, eventually I think you find little bits and pieces of these movies that you like. So, I mean, I'm sure I'll find something in it that's just mm-hmm. like, oh, I like that little scene. There is stuff in it, like we said, that, oh, I like that little part. But I, it's just, I still hate that movie. I, I mean, it. I I I feel like every 2021 horror movie has been extremely divisive. So if that's how you feel about Halloween Kills, you might feel that way about some of our thoughts about other movies that have come out this year when we do our end of the year episode. So yeah. just, I feel like every horror movie's been that way this year. I, so I love all of the memes. Came yeah, out because of this movie. I mean, that's mm-hmm. very true. Um, I'm, I will say something about Halloween in general. Seeing where we've gone with the sequels and all that stuff, and where we are now, I'm gonna say that the John Carpenter sister idea was actually the best thing that could have happened to that series. Yep. I'm good. I'm I'm on. I'm like a lot of people like even I mean John Carpenter. Uh, obviously, the famous story is that you know six pack of beer. He decided that they were brother and sister, but. I'm going to say that was the key moment for this franchise. That is what made Halloween Halloween. That's part of it. Also, Loomis, but, you know, mm-hmm. I think of every loomis list movie is far, far more Absolutely. for not having him in it. Absolutely. Because he can yeah. say ridiculous things and sound, mm-hmm. you know, reasonable. But that's I, that's mm-hmm. what I'll say about Halloween right now. <laughs> the lo- <laughs> See? I have thoughts. It's the long Halloween. That's Batman. 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 Stop. That's Batman. Batman. Yeah. You stop. Just which is good. Which is great. It landed. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, The Skeleton Keys, starting with Colin. Back to going in order. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I am going to recommend this movie. Uh, I think this this is all. It's actually been on my list. Holly, thank you for bringing it. Uh, it. Uh, I think this is this has always been one of my favorite horror movies of the two thousands. Um, I think because, well, a couple things, you know, the fact that I didn't see the end coming, uh, that like never happens. I, I am in over enthusiastic when <laughs> that happens, but even watching how they get to it, there is so much like they know the screenwriter, Aaron Kruger. Yes. The <laughs> yep. Aaron Kruger yep. has so much confidence in his end that he is able to build in like this whole, you know, just getting into the the place and the atmosphere of what's going on and meeting these characters. And he does lead you on these kind of red herring kind of detours where it's like, Oh, this could be, we could be going to like, you know, uh, they're serial killers and they're keeping somebody or there's ghosts and the ghost did it to them. Or mm-hmm. there was something else that occurred to me. Now I can't even remember those. Like at this point, it could, we could be going this way <laughs> even. And it, it keeps hiding, which I guess is not obvious, from you you know but the all the breadcrumbs are there when you go back and look at it it's like okay they they legitimately like set this up this honestly pays off you know the story is there they're not like really cheating at it the only thing that they did i think is maybe you know in uh the the necessity of convenience you know yeah it's like well we knew she was going to get away but we still you know she's still going to end up back at this house if she would have done something else you know then uh, the movie wouldn't have gone the same way but i guess they do even take care of that cuz they give like the the they put a spell on her so she can't leave the grounds you know we don't know that or she doesn't know that's why she can't get out of the gate doesn't break but it's because there's mm. a spell so they did kind of in the narrative like cover all these bases um i like the look and feel of the movie uh, uh, the atmosphere of it's like a subject that I'm interested in and it's a place that you know is like very nice to look at it has that steeped like a tea bag right it's steeped in southern gothic atmosphere uh, it just reeks off the movie or whatever uh, permeates everything uh, the performances I think are good uh, Kate Hudson you know has the the chops to be like a major actress I know you're saying she is I'm like, where'd she go? Right, I guess she that's my to be. I would like to see her in more stuff, I guess. And yeah. it seems like she's absent from the things I watch. Um, I, I like movies that give big parts to older actors. You know, like uh, this is a big role for Jenna Rollins, you know. And I mean, I suppose and John Hurt, even though he doesn't have to say anything, you're just banking on like this guy, you know, is a is a force that carries this part. Um, so I guess I like the fact that the director... Uh, I just saw a, a new movie that where it was some seemed like they got a, a director who was known for doing other stuff to make a horror movie. And it was like, I don't think you know how to make a horror movie. 
And this one is the opposite of that. It's like this guy doesn't seem like he came from a horror background, but he was able to make a horror movie and then never made like another one or curve or whatever he did later. Mm -hmm. You know, but I mean, it seemed like he should have been able to capitalize on this, but uh, obviously wanted to broaden his portfolio. But uh, yeah, I would definitely say that you have to. I mean, despite despite the fact that we ruined it for you, uh, you have to watch (laughs) the skeleton key. It's uh, yeah. Top. One of the top ten movies of the 2000s. I we think. don't ruin things, Colin. We make them better. There you go. Michaela, what would you think? Uh, I mean, I'm a little on the fence because I didn't particularly enjoy it while I was watching it. I thought it was a little slow moving and a little dull. Uh, and it suffered from the, that. Turns like, out you and me are slow moving and dull. Yeah. And we didn't Apparently get it. the problem is me, not the movie. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. Yeah. Turns out we're the problem. T- turns out I thought I was three steps ahead of the movie when I was really three steps behind. So, you know problem is me but uh, i do like appreciate its big budget it's got big stars it's like i also appreciate older actors getting a chance to get like meaty roles and not mm-hmm. just like for sure you know oh, yeah see last night in and soho for, for some very Ray, meaty yeah. old people roles yes absolutely mm, meaty old people <laughs> delicious <laughs> terrence stamp too terrence oh, stamp yeah. gets a meaty terrence role still alive? yeah Holy and shit. he's great in it but yeah and this is and that's diana riggs final performance so you gotta go see it because right. of that um it this movie yeah i i appreciate the atmosphere i appreciate the like the, the setting is something we don't see in a ton of horror movies right we don't get a lot of southern gothic like hoodoo or creole or any sort of like anything in that region of the country we don't get a ton of it's not an abundance there's no. last exorcism there's this there's the reaping and that's like oh, it there's a new uh, i was thinking about it. yeah i'm sorry i'll come up no no <laughs> like but like we get one every like decade basically right you know um it was american horror story coven yeah and that was messy it was messy. Uh, I, you I know. kind of enjoyed that season, but it was messy. It, that was the last season I ever watched that show. Yeah. And I was like, nah, I'm good. Um, it's something that it seems like every couple years we go back to, but we can never really do it justice. Um, but having unpacked this movie and put together all the pieces I was missing, <laughs> I now have a new appreciation for it that I didn't have while I was watching it. So I feel like I have to recommend it just because the movie outsmarted me. So I guess you should watch it. <laughs> and, and maybe maybe if you're smarter than me you will enjoy it more than i did so yeah i guess i recommend it sean i mean i, I could just say that yeah. what michaela said yeah. um I, I i'm surprised i have to give credit to aaron Kruger. he got me that son of a bitch um <laughs> he really did uh yeah I, again i'm still still mulling it over in my head because like i said the experience while I was watching it, wasn't the best, but the conversation exactly. and putting everything together, just like, yeah. oh, all right, this movie had a lot more going for it than I saw. So that, mm-hmm. like we said, that's our fault. That's my fault. Um, I was surprised by the movie. I think it's, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having a hard time with it because I also don't think it's like an amazing movie. But looking back on it, like it's still, I mean, it's you should watch it. It's a good movie. Like Colin, and everybody say it's got good atmosphere. Um, I think it'll surprise you because it it is trying to it is trying to mess with you on purpose because it's trying to make the movie other things and I think that's why I skipped it in the first place because I thought it looked like those movies that I don't particularly gravitate towards. Um, little did I know that was a mechanism of the movie. So I'll, I salute the movie. Um, I think it does some surprising. I was surprised and uh, I can't say enough about that. So when something can surprise me. I mean, it gets a thumbs up for me, so uh, I'll recommend it. And yeah, bring Kate Hudson back; like she's uh, she's great mm-hmm. to watch. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's a recommendation for the skeleton key. Ollie, what's she doing? <laughs> what's she doing over there? I'm just sitting, okay. listening. <laughs> um, yeah. So the first like few minutes of this movie, Sean said. This is a Holly movie. And you <laughs> yeah. are correct, sir. This is, yeah. Holly, this is such a Holly pick. Yeah. This just is th- a Holly just, pick. If nothing else, just thinking back to the others, I'm like, this is such a Holly yep. pick. Such a Holly pick. You are correct. <laughs> I do I do like this movie. Um, I'm definitely going to recommend it. The ambiance is fantastic. I love the subject matter. Candles. It's good candles. All oh, the candles. Um, I love the subject matter. I love the Southern Plantation, Creole, voodoo, hoodoo. I love all of that mythology, and I want more of it. I, I think it's kind of an untapped subject matter that I, I would love to see more of. Um, I think this is a forgotten one of the 2000s. I really do. It was funny because I went to the chiropractor the other day and I was telling the girl that was doing my therapy, about. she's like, what would your podcast about? And I told her, like, oh, I'm picking Skeleton Key. She's like, oh my God, 
I love that movie. And I was like, really? <laughs> She's like, yes. And she was like the first person I've talked to that like, even not knows what a, it not, is. Like, yeah, even knew what it was. And she was like, I'm obsessed with that movie. I was like, awesome. Um, <laughs> there we go. It's just a forgotten one, but I, I think it's really good. I, I think um, you guys made me feel kind of smart because I, <laughs> I actually saw like, because I knew it was coming. I was like, oh my gosh, you guys couldn't figure it out. Oh, I feel really smart right now. <laughs> um, Idiots. But, <laughs> I'm the smartest person. I'm just kidding. Um, no, I, I, I think it's, I really appreciate where they went with the story. Um, I appreciate all the little bits that we, you know, talked through and brought back around and connected the dots. Uh, I think that's what's fun about this movie. I I wish there had been more about the mythology. I wish there had been more, um, I don't know, more meat to the 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 hoodoo part of it. But because I agree with you, it is kind of slow. Um, I it's enough for me with the ambiance and just the feel of the movie. But as far as like storytelling, it's definitely a slow burn movie. Um, but yeah, I really like it. I recommend it. I think it's a good time. It did pretty well, um, even though it's not really remembered well. The budget was forty three million. It did ninety four million. So nice, did pretty well. Um, yeah, I think it's a good time. I think it should be known that the uh, the bones in this movie that were used were raccoon penis bones. Oh, yeah, that should be known. The world needs I to know. Still hear they didn't need to go that like together. method with it. Yeah, <laughs> raccoon penis. You ever you ever heard raccoon penises clink together? Yeah. That's a good conversation starter. Watch the skeleton key. Yeah, yeah. We'll find out there what it sounds go. like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to recommend. I think it's a good one. I, uh, yeah, there you go. There it is. That's, that's, uh, that's Freak Show approved. It, it is. Okay. It is. Right. That means you have to watch it. That's Actually, the bargain you've entered into. That's the rule. By listening to the show. All right, so uh, next week. Okay, we'll- <laughs> what are we watching next week? Sean's in a hurry, apparently. <laughs> um, I'm just excited to think more about this movie. <laughs> like, it all came together at the end. Okay. Do you guys hear that? It's the sound of me putting my feet up on the therapy couch. Oh, no. Oh, because it's time. To get into high tension. Ooh. Next week, okay. Alexander Aja's high tension. Okay. okay. All right. All next right. week. All right. Nice. We do have that one. Yeah. We can... we're, we're diving into the new French extremity next week. That's so. right. Yeah. yeah. Back to the 2000s for the movies mm-hmm. that defined the 2000s horror. <laughs> yeah. All right. See, high tension. See, I told you we'd all get there. <laughs> <laughs> next week on Saturday Night Freak Show, we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.